Right guys, welcome to part 3 of the beginning series and here we are at the end of it. First of all, remember that what we did till now is gonna stay the same no matter in which direction we go with the account, if it's a farm or a main account. So, let's separate everything and first start with farm account. Now, here we are on my farm account, we are at castle level 14, I've just upgraded a few hours ago. The more important part is castle level 13. This is the point where you can say you have a farm. It's enough production on your farm to sustain a general castle. Like for example, my main castle at the moment has castle is level 18. And this farm is more than enough for what I need in it. Now the first thing we're going to be talking about is the setup of the buildings. If you check it out, I've already did it in my farm. Every building that we're not going to be needing, we're going to be disconnecting from any road to not consume charcoal. And we're going to be focusing only on what we need in a farm, which is resources and gold. Speaking of gold, you probably noticed that my mints are over here and they're not connected to a road. That's because mints do not require road to function. If we click on our gold production, we're going to see I am at 100% gold production. Now the one thing you want to focus on when it comes to the gold production is obviously upgrading the mints but depending on the level of your mints is how much population it's going to require for those mints to actually function. Now considering we're not using our tavern because it's disconnected here lonely forever we're going to be focusing on our passive population and passive population is the type of population you have in your castle while you're not feeding them the population will go down but only to a certain number and then it will stay there without moving and that number is affected by the maximum amount of population you can have in your castle which means upgrading your houses will increase the maximum population which also will increase the passive population so that even without a tavern we have enough population here in our town to have the gold production going at maximum percentage so take that in consideration that's why the houses have to be connected together with all the resource buildings also connected have to be the storages because disconnecting the storage means you lose the entire uh, amount of storage that building gives you so those have to be connected obviously we're going to be having connected our charcoal workshop because that's the guy that gives us all the charcoal now the dragon itself does not consume anything so don't worry about it this is just there because it's more efficient and i already have more than enough production so i don't worry about it and last but not least is the trading house which doesn't have to be connected but i can afford doing it and so it's there now one thing that is still connected is the fortress but that's because i want to talk about it not because i need it afterwards this is also going to be disconnected with that said, this will be the same no matter if you have an active or a passive farm. Active farm would mean you have a farm that you have to log in on to do certain tasks to increase the production of your farm. And more importantly, gathering. This is the thing to have more resources on each farm. For gathering, we're gonna be needing something that I didn't talk about at all. Now, let me say, the reason why I didn't say one word about technological upgrades until this level is because we didn't need them. Remember, until level 13, my resource production was level 1, 3 and not even all the buildings connected and everything. And all that this tech is giving me is buffs to the already production I have. So if I don't have any production, the technological upgrades would be pretty much useless to have in the first place. That's why after we get to castle level 13 and we start upgrading the resource styles, that's when we're going to be needing buffs to it. And more specifically, the first thing you're going to need in the town development tech is the 50% done. It's going to increase you the uh, resource production and the gold production. If we are gathering, we're going to go down to these four babies, which at the moment you see I'm not upgrading them because I will not gather but if you do gather these four will increase the gathering speed which makes it more efficient. Going down the town development you're gonna get buffs like gem refining you're never gonna use because you're never gonna gather gems 
storage expansion is good to have but it's 500,000 storage at maximum so it's, it's good to have but not wow and the last one is increase building speed to the maximum of 10% considering it's a farm you're not gonna be developing a lot of things to actually need this buff it's good to have but not completely required especially at lower levels I would say maximum to this floor each, each legion has its own tech and the one thing I would say you should be focusing on is getting to the second hero in your legion because the more heroes you have the more troops you're gonna be having in that legion and so you can gather more resources now of course the most efficient would be to get to the third hero but that takes a lot of time a lot of resources and gold and I would advise you to if you're gonna be doing that to do it in later stages of your farm because first we're gonna be developing other things and you're probably gonna need this farm for your main account so it's not gonna have that many resources and gold in it anyway besides the tech itself one thing we're gonna be needing is upgrading the training grounds for each legion each training ground represents each legion and increasing the level will increase again the amount of troops in that legion specifically third thing the troops we're gonna be using all you need is the calf building the stables because the first troops you're gonna be able to train is the only troops you're gonna be ever needing tier one cavalry has the highest marching speed and the highest load of any other troops in the game so these are perfect and the only troops you will ever use for gathering also these are the same troops you're gonna be using in your main account when you attack your farm because of their amount of load they have not only that the girls like them but obviously when you hit your farm you're gonna get more resources out of it and because they're just tier one they don't have a high demoli demolition so that means you can attack your farm multiple times without destroying the castle itself heroes the only heroes you're gonna be needing for gathering are purple heroes and the reason why purple is because compared to blue and green you have the awakening skill which is this one now the skills you're gonna be needing for gathering is the first skill which increases the amount of troops that hero can have in his row the sixth skill which is the awakening will buff up the first skill which gives you even more troops in your legion don't waste any wisdom medals on all the other ones because those are just combat skills and we don't need them when we're gonna go gathering all we need is as many troops as possible and with that said that is your gathering troops obviously you can also build uh, the scavenger set which is the equipment but for that you're gonna be needing a blacksmith and a lot of time spent in it those are things you're gonna want to do in later stages of your farm but for the beginning I would advise you to just focus on what I said till now a passive farm obviously is the exact opposite we don't want to do anything on it and the reason why because it makes no sense it takes me five days to build a castle level 13 farm which is already a farm on itself it's producing a lot of resources it's producing a lot of gold you can build multiple farms in the same time by connecting all your accounts to the im30 it's very easy to switch between them and you only need to log in like two or three times per day to do your buildings uh, upgrades uh, until you finish the entire farm so you might as well just do four connect to each one of them individually because you're going to be upgrading the same buildings anyway so in five days you're going to be having four level 13 farms so why bother logging in on my farm every day to gather when i could just build more farms and you may think like that's way too much work but think about it if i build four eight farms let's go to the max if I build eight farms, it takes me five days, maybe a bit of more work because we're talking about eight. But in five days, I have eight level 13 farms, which I'm just going to leave there and they're going to be producing gold and resources. And every time I need something from them, I just attack and I get it. An active farm is something that 
as long as you play this game you have to log in every day to send the troops gathering to send the, uh, the workers exploring and so on so tell me which part of it is more work building more farms and having them passive or having active farms so the choice is yours no matter which one you do both are good me personally i prefer less stress so passive it is as for the class of a farm you have the choice between farmer and trader everything else is not worth it farmer increases your resources and increases the gathering plus it gives you a class building which will give you extra resources every day trader has two abilities that i am interested in first of all it increases the gold production and the second part is the more important part is as a trader you're going to be losing more resources when attacked by another player which means when you attack with your main castle on your farm each attack will get more resources and gold this is the more important part out of it with each attack remember as a rider you can only get gold while attacking with your class legion so you are limited to that 100 stamina in your class legion every time you want to get gold out of your farms so the more gold we're getting out of it with each hit the more gold we're gonna be having in a fully maxed out legion with tier 1 calves in it you can get up to 1.3 million gold for each hit on a trader farm that means with 100 stamina you're gonna get 20 hits which will get you to 26 million gold per full stamina with the tech upgraded on your class legion you're gonna be having the opportunity to hit it two times with full stamina so that will get us to 52 million gold per day out of your trader farms and that is the reason why I like passive and a lot of farms and all trader farms. Again, farmer or trader are both good. I personally prefer trader and this is the reason why. Now, back to the fortress, upgrading the fortress because upgrading the for fortress is gonna increase the durability of your castle. And why is that important because the higher durability you have the more you can attack your farm without having to worry you are destroying it and the last thing we're going to be talking on your farm is the recycling method this is a thing you can do on an active farm or on a passive i personally even if i have passive farms and i don't like going on them and doing stuff for extra resources recycling is my method of whenever i do need more resources than my farm can give me i do this now on Heroes Day, which is on Thursday, all your hourly rewards are gonna be about hero development. More importantly, we're gonna be focusing on the ones that require spending wisdom medals. And this is where we're gonna be talking about why we're not using orange for gathering. Whenever you are splitting a hero, we're gonna be getting back not just the hero medal itself, but you're also going to be getting back 80% of all the gold and wisdom medals used on that hero. And then what we're doing is just upgrading the skills to the maximum level, then moving to the next skill to the maximum level and so on. When you run out of wisdom medals to upgrade the skill, you can move to the next skill which requires less, le less wisdom medals because of lower level until you run out. And when we run out of wisdom medals, all you do is split the hero and you get 80% back and then you continue on the next green hero and like that the main point of it is spending wisdom medals to get hourly chests so we're gonna get as many hourly rewards by doing this over and over and over hero recycling i like to use this every time i need resources and we're talking about on a full day I get per farm to the amount of 13,000 gems plus all the resources, all the speed ups, all the teleports from each hourly that I'm finishing. We're talking about a lot of resources. Now remember, that means we're not going to be using any scrolls, any wisdom medals whatsoever unless it's Heroes Day. Like that, when Hero Day comes, we have as much ways of making points and getting as many rewards as possible. Now, what you 
and with that said i think we are done with the farm account so let's move to the main okay here we are on my main account we are at castle level 18 i finished castle level 18 in about 11 days of building my castle in the same time i was also building that level 14 farm that you've seen before so you see it doesn't require that much time to actually build the farm you can also do it while you're just focusing on your main account now on my main account you probably notice i have a similar setup as my farm only obviously i'm gonna have certain buildings that i do require the reason why you still see the mints connected is because i want to actually upgrade them before disconnecting them and at the moment they're not upgraded so they're still there now as i said in a main account you're going to be having buildings that you're going to require and still you don't want them connected to the road a good way of doing it is for example for troop buildings troop buildings will still train troops even when not connected to the road so what we're going to be doing is connecting them to one road which can easily be put to the main road by moving one thing and like that i can get in train my troops and when i'm finished disconnect now the reason why we're going to be doing this is this 78.6 thousand charcoal per per hour disconnected 66 it's a lot if you combine that with the useless tavern here that's more than enough to destroy your life as you can see i'm producing with the charcoal factory more charcoal that's because i am preparing for upgrading to castle level 19 but that's a different story you can still stay at castle level 18 without extra production and still relying only on your charcoal workshop now later stages you're gonna be needing the charcoal factories because you're gonna be needing charcoal for much more than just uh, having your castle going but for now it's enough another thing to take in consideration are the medical tents now as you can see again those are not connected except one so the medical tents after upgraded they will still give you the capacity no matter what I, as you can see i have 30 35,000 capacity in the medical tents a good trick to do because medical tents are something that you're gonna be needing way more than other buildings uh, so to not have to connect and disconnect the building every time you need to go on a medical tent i like to keep one medical tent connected to the road because that gives me access to all the wounded troops that i have in my castle so that is one thing the worker hoods now the worker hoods are disconnected because i don't need them once the worker hood is placed the worker will be there and they are available to work the only thing that the building itself is doing is for strategical position so for example if i would be having a lot of charcoal factories okay and later stages you will have them to fill up the charcoal factory with wood the worker has to go first into the lumber yard to get the wood and then go into the charcoal factory to bring it and this is where the worker hoods are coming to place you will want to place the worker hood somewhere close to the lumber yard so when you when you want to fill it up when you want to fill the charcoal factory with wood it's just going to go from here to the lumber yard and from the lumber yard directly to the charcoal factory that's the only use of it if the worker hoods are not connected to the road then your workers are going to leave from the castle itself so don't worry about it at the moment i don't need any of that so those are disconnected and the workers just leave from the castle now when it comes to tech the most important tech you will ever need in this game zone commemoration which is gonna be unlocked after you upgrade your institute to level 8 and this baby is the creme de la creme of rise of empires because this is gonna increase the points you're gonna be doing in clash of province and it's gonna increase the rewards you're gonna be getting from clash of province and clash of province is the main point 
of the game that's where you're going to be getting resources gems super scrolls which are very important speed ups for the next day and so on i'm not going to talk a lot about the tech itself because i want to do an entire video just about clash of province and that's where i'm going to expand the subject but for now remember this don't spend courage medals courage medals are only and only for zone commemoration nothing else and the two ways you can get courage medals is either from the shop and we're gonna be buying the 50x uh, and nothing else don't waste your hero tokens on anything else except the 50x courage medals because until we're gonna finish the zone commemoration tech that's the most important thing you want i know you want heroes i know you want other stuff but the faster you get zone commemoration maxed out the faster you're gonna get everything else from heroes resources you name it you got it and why are we focusing only on the 50x because the if you buy the one with the 250 and 100 hero tokens the value is not worth it the amount of hero tokens you are spending to buy that one you can buy much more while buying the 50. now other tech then zone commemoration we're going to be talking about basic combat now i know i said don't use courage medals for anything else except zone commemoration this does not require a lot of medals but the bonuses it gives you will help you a lot especially at lower levels what this will do first of all they will give you buffs to make it easier for you to kill monsters and i'm gonna explain why it's good second of all it's gonna let you upgrade your cavalry you upgrade your troops to higher tiers and more importantly we're gonna be doing it until here increase the hero xp received after leading troops to defeat marauders aka killing monsters this tech will help you a lot on the long run to develop your heroes now I wouldn't advise you from this point on to continue the, the tech in basic combat just stay there until later stages where anyway you're gonna have to upgrade it but for now just till that point and obviously one of the more important part is increasing your legions and more, impo more importantly start with your class legion because that's the most important legion you're gonna be having as you can see i'm already working on my way to upgrade to unlocking the third hero for it and so on um, last but not least you're going to be having depending on which type of troops you're going to be using in your castle the the troop specific techno technology that's also one place you want to spend time in when it comes to upgrading technology when it comes to town development because we are on the main castle we're going to be upgrading and we're going to be upgrading a lot so finishing the town development till the last upgrade which is the building speed increase is worth it do that as for buildings important buildings to focus on we're going to be having our riders hall and i'm going to talk about the class soon we're gonna be having our garrison hall which increases the tactical resistance of all your troops which is very important trust me another thing to work on is your bar because the higher the level of the bar the more experience your heroes will get when you kill monsters with them again very important on the long run and of course the war rooms on later stages of your castles they're gonna be unlocked again focus only on whatever specific troop type you're gonna choose and speaking of troop types let's talk about which troops are the best troops to have <sighs> there is no such thing as the best troops each troop itself has its own specific quality the easiest and most common ones are cavalry and I personally would advise you to focus on cavalry. Now, archery, archers are also good. Footmen are the least type of troops you would ever want because majority of 
each troop type is uh, a counter to a certain other troops. Cavalry destroy footmen, archers destroy cavalry, and footmen destroy archers. Remember that majority of people play cavalry at the beginnings, which means if you play archers, you're probably gonna beep all the cavalry people. But why do people play cavalry anyway? Because cavalry are the fastest troops in the game. And you're gonna know that if you ever main archers or footmen. Second of all, cavalry also have the highest load. So during raids and during kill event, you're not only gonna destroy the other castle, but you're also gonna get as many resources out of it as possible. So this is a good reason why you everybody likes to main cavalry over all the other troops. Archers again are very good because you're gonna be a step in front of all the majorities that will play cavalry. Footmen are useless because waiting for somebody that has archer main just to hit you after all the cavalry people destroyed your castle because they counter your troops it's just not worth it. Later in the game when the rock event is gonna start you're gonna realize why footmen are very important but only then and even also is going to require footmen but until then focus either on cavalry or archers preferably cavalry after you choose the troops remember you need to choose a class and the only class you're going to be choosing is raider rider whatever you call it that class simply because that's the class to go now you're going to have a lot of people commenting about yeah but there is no yeah but if you choose farmer you're gonna have increased resources you have a depot protection and more increased resources and increased gathering we don't need that because we have a farm on the contrary you have when sieging troop defense minus 30 percent troop marching speed minus 30 percent when sieging troop damage minus 30 percent so it makes you weaker for the sake of having resources that anyway you're going to be getting from your farms trader class you're going to get more gold uh yeah that's uh, to be fair you're just gonna get more gold everything else is useless but on the other hand wounded healing speed is gonna be at minus 50 percent and when attacked and losing the battle you're gonna lose 100 percent extra resources which is perfect on a farm but not on our main account because we don't need that shit. and the gold extra gold you're gonna be getting as a trader guess what you're gonna get it from your trader farms and that's it there's no other class right there okay craftsman sucks craftsman is not a class craftsman is as you, let me show you a representation of how useless craftsman class is hmm. now as a raider rider i don't know exactly how you pronounce it you get the class class building for raider which in, increases the might and resistance of the class legion which makes your class legion stronger wounded healing speed which means when you're gonna be battling a lot you're gonna have also faster healing for your troops when sieging 40 percent casualties become wounded which means you're not gonna lose troops that much because they're all gonna be wounded so you can heal them when sieging troop payload plus 150 percent that means we're gonna get more resources when we successfully attack a castle aka farms now when harvesting troop payload minus 50 percent we don't care because we have farms gold production minus 30 percent we don't care because we have farms and lumber food marble and iron production minus 30 percent and we don't care because guess what we have farms so you understand there's no other class better than Raider class. The entire point of the game is developing your castle to be a stronger fighter. And the only class that actually makes you a stronger fighter is the Raider class. So there is no discussion about which class to choose. Raider. Done. Finished. Area cleansing operation. This is an event that's going to start the moment you build the castle from the first place. And it's going to last one month. 
the one thing I want to talk about is the three heroes that you have to get no matter what. If you don't want to get the rest, fine with me, but get Chief Fuchs, Sergeant and Lady Knight. Why? Because all of these are troop specific uh, heroes. For example, you're gonna get a 15% increase training speed for each troop type. Obviously, each hero itself has its own troop type, so depending on which troop you choose to develop first, that's the one you're gonna want. But later, anyway, you're gonna want to have all three troop types. And these heroes you can only get during this event and no time other. So get them because they're really worth it. They're easy to develop, so it doesn't require any extra stuff except wisdom medals, wisdom medals and so on. You're gonna have also orange heroes with the same skills as this one and even better, but orange heroes that are made for troop development, they also require even more of the same type of hero to develop the skills. So it makes it much harder to actually get the same buffs that you're getting from this one. So my advice, get these three ASAP. Don't lose them because after the event, again, you're not going to be able to. If you have any extra points, I would advise you to use them on recruitment tickets because that means a chance to get more orange heroes and this is what we want everything else is pretty much useless after getting the schools you might as well just get the xp and then get the wisdom medals i don't invest too much time in this event anyway i prefer to get those three blue the troop develop development heroes and that's it now when it comes to heroes I'm not gonna talk too in depth about it because I want to do a video about heroes themselves and that's gonna be a long one which uh, has all the details that you want to know on heroes but for the beginnings I advise you to not invest in any bloody blue or green hero purple heroes yes you're gonna need some purple heroes at the beginning to kill some monsters to attack your farms and so on but don't invest too much wisdom medals in them. Specifically, try to actually focus more on getting the first skill uh, upgraded and maybe a few other skills just to help you out with the monsters. But have patience and wait for orange heroes because you're never gonna be using anything else except orange heroes. And later on, you're gonna have the seasoned heroes which will replace the orange heroes themselves. But for now, save your experience, save your wisdom medals for orange heroes. Do not upgrade the level of your castle needlessly. Now, I know that until now we've been rushing level, castle level. That was because the rewards and the requirements weren't as hard to get, so we didn't have a problem with the castle level. But every three castle levels, the uh, hourly rewards and the cop rewards are gonna get harder and are gonna offer more with each chest and that's why until we develop our zone commemoration tech which is going to help us out of by getting uh, easier copy words you do not want to advance your castle level too much now at castle level 16 is already where you get to the next stage of uh, harder hourly and har harder cop so 17 18 will be the same the moment you go to 19 you already uh, make the hourly and the copy words harder to get with more in it. That's why it's very important, don't go up to 19. Stay at castle level 18 maximum until you develop your zone commemoration, which again, I'm gonna talk about later in another video. But for now, trust me on this one, don't rush your castle level, stay there. Another thing you wanna start focusing on is equipment and you should start early stages now there's two ways of making your equipment the materials you can get either by producing them with a blacksmith or by killing monsters and more specifically these babies you have a limit of 10 destroyers per day so don't get stingy just kill 10 destroyers per day the higher the level the better quality materials they're gonna drop make sure you make a habit out of it kill 10 destroyers every day because that's a lot of free materials you're gonna be getting to get your equipment 
Equipment may not seem like something important, but trust me, in later stages, you're gonna have the upper hand above everybody else if your equipment is stronger than them. Everybody's gonna have the same type of troop, the same uh, level of tech, but the equipment is the one that's gonna make the difference. And the faster you develop it by getting it from destroyers or from the blacksmith, the better. So, kill 10 destroyers a day, highest level as possible and continuously produce material from your blacksmith depending on which troop type you will choose and the last thing to take in consideration is the national quest if you have clash of province already active the same like the equipment is something that you need to start working on from the very first levels always send each day the maximum amount of uh, national quest because the level of your class in my case a siege master because i'm a raider uh, is gonna be very important in the later stages and when i say later i mean we're talking about the end of the stages when everybody's gonna have maximum uh, castle level maximum troops maximum tech the only difference between each player is gonna be this because everybody's gonna be maxed on everything else except the class level and these class levels may not look interesting at the beginning but the later you go down the tree the more buffs you get and those will be the ones that make the difference the same like the equipment makes in the middle of the game at the end of the game this is the difference so don't forget about it each day send your troops do the national quest and make sure you increase the level as much as possible with that said i think we have the main account covered all you want to focus on now is continuing developing your castle, develop your tech, and we'll see you in the next videos for more information on our Rise of Empires guide. But guys, if you enjoy the content, remember again, like, share, and of course, subscribe to the channel and support my work so I can offer you more content like this. But for now, thanks again for checking in, and we'll see you in the next video.